All right. So as you guys know, mint builders, you know, we're, we're precious metal specialists. You know, I've been myself been involved in precious metal since the late nineties, uh, doing a lot of day trading with futures, fun stuff, scary sometimes, fun other times. Uh, you can make a lot of money, you can lose a lot of money. You know, basically that's the, the, the paper side of it. Um, uh, about 2007, I said, you know what, it's time to actually get into the physical side. This is a real savings. This is what we're all about. Um, so we've been in the industry now, um, you know, almost, well, I think what this fall will be 17 years now. So it's a long time. Um, but we are not financial advisors. Although I've read, I don't know, over a hundred books on financial um, things and, you know, there's nuggets in every book you read and uh, kind of picking up things that, you know, that they have changed in the last, you know, 15, 16 years, but, you know, some things kind of stay the same. But uh, anyway, as far as the financial side of things go, you know, you can seek your own advice from, a, uh, you know, a licensed financial advisor. Uh, we're not, what I'm going to talk to you about tonight isn't necessarily financial advice. What it is, is just giving you the the insight to say, Hey, you know, I need to learn more. I need to, you know, take the time to look into and, and study what's, you know, important. Um, you know, we have different parts of life that's important, but one aspect of, uh, of that is always our financial well being, Right. So, you know, when we look at it, you know, I look at it as kind of like a wealth trinity, if you will, or, you know, um, there's three parts to it. You know, you have your, your, your health, you know, that's a big part of it. You have your, your social life, your connectivity relationships, and you have your financial side of it. You can't be, um, complete without having those three things in place. So we're going to talk about one of those sides. Um, it's kind of up to you to have the other two in place, but this is what we're talking about tonight. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. Mint Builder um, overview and let you kind of know what's going on here. So we are in a position right now where we, you know, we're submerged in financial quicksand. You know, the more you struggle in this quicksand, the more it's going to suck you under. Uh, it's hard to get out of, uh, but it's not, it's not impossible. It is, it's actually, not easy, but it's simple. And I'm going to talk about what I mean by that as we go through this. Um, basically, what it all kind of comes down to is this, you know, how much do you have saved? And, you know, we're not talking about just saving your, your, the, the precious dollar, um, you know, or, you know, we have people like I see here in the chat from Canada, we got people from the UK and people from Australia, you know, so we're talking about the, you know, the pounds and the euros and things like that. You know, we're talking about not saving something that was never intended and designed to be saved. We're talking about something different. Um, that's what we're going to go into as we go through this. But I do believe saving is the first step. It's something we kind of stepped away from in the last few generations. My grandparents, uh, they were savers. You know, it was, it was different for them because their, their currency was actually um, backed by gold. So it was real, right? It was tangible. So it was something backed by gold. Uh, so it was easier for them to do a little bit, you know, that, in, that, in that aspect. For us, it, it's still possible. It's not that hard. It's just one extra step in place. You know, since our 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 currency is not backed by precious metals, we have to back it ourselves. So that just adds an extra step. But it's important to start saving. Um, we all think, you know, well, we can't do it. We're gonna do it eventually. We're gonna, you know, make some more income. We're gonna, you know, get into that point. But I can tell you from doing studies over the last 50 years that it's not going to get easier. It's going to continue to get harder to save. So if we can't start saving now, then it's not going to happen at any point. And when I'm talking about, um, you know, getting into the precious metals idea and what we're going to talk more about and kind of build a case for it so you understand where, we're, where that is and what how it can benefit you, um, you know, kind of just understanding the point that, you know, the, the cost of living based on our dollar or whatever fiat currency you you live with is not the same, um, you know, you're not going to keep up with it. So we're not getting, uh, you know, increases in income as fast as inflation, true inflation is going. So we have to start now with, if it's scraping, scrounging, whatever it may be, it's really important to put together a uh, emergency fund. You know, I, I did the whole Dave Ramsey course thing. I used to teach it. Um, do I believe it hundred percent? No, I don't, but I do think aspects of it are good. Um, one of them is emergency fund, which is what about a week's worth of income. That's the starting point. Um, then you want to build it to a month's worth of income, three months of income. Um, and this is something you can liquidate easily. You know, he talks about saving, you know, cash, you know, putting it somewhere. Uh, I think that converting it, cash savings would have been good, you know, going back 50 years ago or, or longer. That would have been perfect. But because it's not money anymore, it's not the thing to save. But it is important to save. Um, starting in, whatever you can do to get to that point before you even start paying off debt. If you're in, the, in these fundamentals early steps. The first thing you need to do is have an emergency fund put away. 
Um, and that's before paying off, starting to pay off debt because you're going to need it. There's always things that come up, right? Um, and so that's what that's there for. Now, you can expedite the savings, again, getting away from fiat currency and getting into precious metals. You know, there's lots of different assets, you know, many, many things you can count as assets in life. But one of the, the best ones I see here, for many reasons, I'll explain a couple of them, is precious metals. And, you know, for one, it's something that's, you know, easy to convert. You can, no matter where you go in the world, precious metals has value and it's wanted, it's needed, and it, it's going to be able to convert pretty easily into any kind of denomination, to any, you know, currency anywhere. So that helps a lot. And then people are like, okay, well, what about, what about cryptocurrency? I'm definitely not against cryptocurrency. I think it's awesome. Um, it's another thing. It kind of helps hedge against some of the inflation stuff. However, it's very, very, um, you know, it, it changes dramatically. Um, and it's not tangible. It's not something you can actually hold in your hand. So could it be possible that at some point, some kind of cyber attack could take it out? It's possible. Again, I'm not against crypto. I own crypto. I, I'm not against it, but I don't think that that should be your only means of savings. I think that there should be other things too. I think it's a great uh, way to uh, prepare for the future, but I also think that having precious metals is the number one priority because of the tangibility of it and the convertibility of it. And it's kind of like this. So why do I believe this? You know, it, it goes back to, you know, about 110 years ago, the Federal Reserve was created. Okay. When that was, when that happened, things changed. That's when everything kind of like, you know, we went to this whole different realm of what, you know, money is and isn't. And it started changing at that point. That's when we gave up our constitutional right in the United States to, you know, create our own money, mint our own money, um, basically. And we gave it up to a private entity, which is Federal Reserve is not federal. It's not federal at all. And, you know, it is a central bank, but also it's not a bank. So no matter what word you use for it, it's, it's deceptive because it's, it's not you know, part of our government and it's not part of the, the banking system, actually. Um, it's a kind of above and beyond that. You know, our, our big banks like Chase and Wells Fargo and Bank of America here in the United States, you know, those are the top tier banks we think of, right? So they answer basically to the Federal Reserve, the central banks. That's what they answer to. Uh, Barclays over in England, same thing. They answer basically to the central bank. Um, and then the central bank, also has a, uh, some money answer to you in the IMF. Um, and then also they have to answer to the BIS. So it's kind of like a, this hierarchy that's kind of really complicated, but it's done that way on purpose. So that way, you know, we're, you know, we're lost in confusion. We're like, it takes too much brain cells to try to figure this out. So we just don't think about it. We don't want to look into it anymore. Uh, but anyway, so when that was created, um, JP Morgan Chase basically kind of initiated it with the help of a Senator uh, because he was like, you know, what? I'm bailing out the country. You know, this is multiple times, three times he had to bail out the United States, uh, mainly the banking system for just poorly, you know, spending money, not using it right, you know, over leveraging themselves, which has never changed to this day. It's still happening. We're going a trillion dollars in debt every hundred days in the United States, a trillion dollars every hundred days. So it's not changed. But basically, he's like, well, if I'm going to help this, I'm going to profit from it. And obviously now who controls you know, the, the currency is going to be the one who's going to make the rules. Well, the Federal Reserve basically controls it because when they want more money in the system, they buy more treasuries and bonds and it creates, you know, more money that goes into supposedly the economy. OK, so that kind of going forward another 20 years, you know, um, Roosevelt had some issues. We had the Great Depression. He basically I'm just going to I'm just summarizing it really fast. This is something that could take chapters in a, you know, in a book to, to learn more about. Um, it's not necessarily stuff we're actually taught in school, the real stuff. But anyway, he took away gold. Uh, gold is no longer legal to own as bullion form anyway. I mean, you can have jewelry. You can have some, you know, certain numismatics and things like that. Um, took it away. And it was kind of a slow process that was intentional. And it took about 60 total years from the time the Federal Reserve was created to the time Roosevelt took, you know, owning gold, you know, to be illegal to the time that Nixon says, hey, I'm taking this off the gold standard temporarily, but ended up being actually not temporary. And that took 60 years because it's about three generations. It's how long it takes for us to kind of lose track of truths because it gets, you know, it, start, you know, it takes a few years for it to kind of, you know, one generation learns it, the next generation isn't taught in schools. So they hear a little bit from their parents maybe. And then the next generation, they don't really, they're not taught in school and they don't hear anything from their parents. So after three generations, the information is pretty much lost. So that's where we are today. 
uh, we're, we're, we have a currency that's backed by nothing. Um, it's basically how it is, is worthless at this point. So what can we do about it? This isn't a doom and gloom uh, evening. This is talking about something positive, something you can do to make a huge change for yourself and your family, your loved ones. Um, change the track record. You know, I don't know. I don't know each and every one of you. Maybe you already have money in your life. Maybe you don't. Uh, maybe you're somewhere in between, like, you know, an average person, majority of people, you know, don't know what to do because we're not taught. You know, I wasn't taught. I grew up very uh, not wealthy. Uh, and so I wasn't taught this stuff. I definitely wasn't taught in school, wasn't taught by my parents. I was taught by my parents that if you have a lot of money, you're probably a bad person. And that's kind of what I was taught. And uh, it really, money is just a tool, you know, it's kind of like, uh, is a car a weapon? Well, it can be. <laughs> um, and I think that it just magnifies our personality. That's what money does. So you're already a good person with money or you're a bad person with money or without money. It's, it's just going to magnify who you are. So I don't think it's a bad person. I've learned different since then. But I also know there's new rules at play. And the rules are who has whoever has the gold makes them and silver that is the same thing and what we have to learn to do here is to follow what are the banks doing the bankers are are, are not going to end up losing they're too big to lose right they're the ones who are going to you know come out ahead in all of this so it's our job if we want to maintain that third part of the wealth trinity the the financial side of it if we want to maintain that it's our job to keep track of what's happening in the financial world. I'm not talking about Wall Street, well, that's garbage. I'm talking about what are the banks, what are the central banks and, and IMF, what are they all doing? What are what are they doing? We need to do it. Not what they're saying, and not, this, not the stuff they're, they're spewing out on different news channels. What are they actually doing? So here's, what's, here's what they're doing. Banks are trading in their currency, or ones and zeros, uh, for silver and gold. JP Morgan Chase, they own 675 million ounces of silver. They actually got a little bit of trouble, penalized a little bit because they were cornered in the market. But you know what? I mean, they were able to take care of that, no problem. And why are they doing this? The central banks, that's uh, Chase's boss, uh, the central banks like the Federal Reserve, they own 25% of all of the gold that's been mined so far. That's 1.15 billion, with a B, ounces of gold. They own 25%. So here's a little side note. If you want to own gold and everybody else on the planet wants to own gold, there's not enough for you to own one ounce, not even one ounce. And maybe less, almost a half of an ounce, honestly, about a half of an ounce because central banks and other big entities like this are buying up gold so much that it makes it almost impossible to, to have that much. So now is the time to do it. There's going to come a point in time where it's you're not going to have the access to it that you do now. It's like it's almost like when it's a fair price, like it is right now, it's it's undervalued. Silver is even more dramatically undervalued, but gold is also. And when it's this like undervalued price and it's readily available, eh, nobody really pays attention. Nobody cares. Sorry, it's, it's it's cool. Yeah, I get it. It's nice, but they don't really do anything about it. All of a sudden, when things start going crazy. And everybody starts fleeing to precious metals, which, you know, we, we've seen just in the, the times of operating um, Mint Builder, we've seen it happen uh, where silver hit almost $50 an ounce. And guess what? There was, we had like thousands of new people coming in every month as customers trying to buy it at that point. Now, because silver is under $30 an ounce, when they were buying at that high point, it's going to take a little bit of time to re recoup what they what they put in. So I'm pleading with you to pay more attention now to see what's happening in the precious metals um, before it gets to that point. Uh, do I think that silver is going to go beyond fifty dollars? Yes, I do. Do I think it's going to get over hundred dollars? I think it has to. I think it has no choice at this point. You know, we're using it in automobiles. We're using it in all the different industries, um, technology, cell phones. You know, all the stuff. Uh, then all the new electric cars they need for the batteries. If Elon if Elon Musk isn't buying up, you know, a millions of ounces of silver, I'd be so surprised. I'm almost certain he has to be because he's going to need it. Um, and here's the thing about gold and silver. It's finite. It's not like paper where we can just grow more trees and print more money. It's not like that. It, it's finite. And they're actually saying for gold, um, there's a different experts that have to do with minerals and accounting for what minerals and stuff are on earth. 
they are looking at gold running out of mineable gold where it's possible for us to reach it by the year 2035. So it's 11 years from now that we might not be able to access it. So that means then whatever gold is present is going to be what everybody's going to fight over. And so what do you think is going to happen to the price of gold when that happens? And when there's already all the gold that's mineable is already on the surface, it's going to change the dynamics of the price of gold. I think gold's going to be into the 10,000 range. Silver they, is even worse. It's, this is, and it's silver is very undervalued right now compared to gold. It should be like, you know, we're talking like 60 ounces, 62 ounces of silver per ounce of gold, somewhere around there. And it's far off of that right now. So we're in the place where it, silver is a huge bargain. Um, gold is also, but silver more so. But they're saying, the same people are saying that silver might be mined out by the end of this decade so we're talking only six years from now and if that happens again what's going to happen to the price of silver silver should already be in a hundred uh, dollar range um, but you know people some people like robert kiyosaki and a few others that are have spent their life studying this kind of market um uh, mahoney and a few others they're they're predicting silver to go like 500 dollars uh, an ounce or more in not not like in our great great grandchildren's future but like in our lifetime and in, in, in actually in the next 10 years or so or less so who knows what's going to happen as far as that goes but the one thing i do know is this is that our money was always backed by precious metals which kept the system honest it's good money um good money is is always going to be the place there and that has been money for thousands and thousands of years uh, and so it's withstood the test of time. Now, even though we're going into the crypto world, which is awesome, you know, whatever that, you know, whatever that may entail, I don't necessarily agree with the CBDC or something like that, where they control that. But, but as far as like, um, you know, decentralized, you know, that's awesome. But one thing is for sure, gold and silver aren't going anywhere. They're, matter of fact, they're so tied into even the new technologies of precious metals that it's it's something that even uh, some of them are even backed by gold. You have gold crypto, which is pretty pretty sweet, right? Because you actually have crypto that's backed by something finite and tangible. I love it. So you got the two things: you got uh, you know, decentralization of the money, and you have it you know, with crypto, and then you have it backed by something tangible like gold. I mean, and that's that's awesome. So anyway, these are the things we're talking about. We're talking about doing what they do, watching what they're doing. Um, and kind of seeing it from there. Now, why are they moving so heavily into precious metals? That's what we have to ask ourselves. We can see they're doing it, but if we don't know why they're doing it, then it may not have the impact and understanding to help us jump into it so that we start saving it and getting ourselves prepared and ready as well. Um, so as I said, the fiat currency of the world is changing. It's not the first time it's changed. It's changed three times in the last 110 years. Um, and this one's just gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna be a little bit more dramatic because of, you know, going from like something that looks like a piece of paper that, hey, you know, it's okay if they change the, the look of it just a little bit. No, this is gonna be something, you know, totally different this time. We're gonna be going to more digital side of things. But in reality, how much paper money do we actually even use nowadays, right? I mean, do you walk around with cash? Well, most people don't. Uh, it's some places don't even take cash. You know, they're just, it's all about the ones and zeros on a card. And that's kind of what we've been, you know, formed into understanding and doing at this point so it's going to change even a little bit more from here but again it's not really anything different on you know this has all been done under the sun before it's just are we going to be prepared for it? are we going to do what people have done in the past and gotten ready for it are we going to do what the central banks are doing why do you think they're gearing up um by the way 20 from 20 uh what was it 2012 or 2013 up to that point the central banks were selling gold so it's not a time. It's not. There's not a place in time for us to always be owning gold and silver. Um, I, it's a good hedge and a good thing to do. But there's times where it's good to sell it too. So I'm not one of those people that advocate just keep buying it until you die. You know, I think that having it, it, it's something we'll talk about in a minute. But it's like a pendulum. There's gonna be a place where it's overvalued and it's undervalued, just like everything else um, that we're dealing with with assets and things. There's times that are over, and right now it's undervalued, um, and other things are in a huge bubble. And I think this is the time where we should be getting involved in it. Um, and by the way, this, I was just mentioning the central banks um, started buying gold again after like, I think it was 2013 because they weren't until then. And they started ramping up, ramping up in 2022. So about a year and a half ago, they bought the record 
the the most highest amount of gold that they ever bought. It's a new record of amount of gold they bought, and they increased by 150 percent of the previous years of how much gold they've ever bought before. And I can't remember it was like a so many t thousand tons or something. It was a lot of gold. They like doubled down in just one year, and that's why they have so much now, and they're still buying. And it's not just not just the banking systems um, and the central banks. It's also governments. What do you think Russia is doing? What do you think China is doing right now? They're buying up as much gold as they possibly can. Now, again, there's a reason for it. They know that they know crazy things are happening uh, with our monetary system, and they're preparing themselves for it. Now they're doing their due diligence. They're doing their right. They're doing their you know the, the process that they should be doing. We should be doing it too. Uh, whatever their scale is, we scale. We do the same thing. We just scale it down to what we can do ourselves. Now, here's something I wanted to drop out here um, tonight, let you know. So I don't know, maybe some of you already heard, um, but currently um, it doesn't matter what side, if, if you're on the fence, on the left side of the fence, the right side of the fence, all that's garbage to me because I think that it's really about, um, you know, honoring your yourself, your family, taking care of your loved ones and helping who you can help. And I think that's what life's all about. And I think this whole, like, you know, trying to divide everybody up is just, um, is one of the biggest problems we have. But um, right now, our current, uh, the Biden administration has just went ahead and signed off on taking the $8 billion that was being, um, that was uh, frozen assets from Russia that we had frozen in our banks here that was Russia's money, $8 billion. They just um, took that frozen, frozen assets and they just spent it as if it was their own money. Um, what they did was they gave it to Ukraine um, for the war effort. So they're it's a slap in the face to Russia because they they're using their money against them, uh, their own money. And here's the problem with that situation. Other countries are seeing this and they're like, Oh my God, we're, we're, this is a big, big deal. So it's not just based on what we think here in the United States or, you know, what they might think in Russia or just in Ukraine globally, our monetary systems are tied together. Right. So it used to be backed by gold. And then it was like, you know, a lot of other countries were back in their money off from the United, from the U.S. dollar. And the U.S. dollar was supposed to be backed by gold. And then all of a sudden it's ripped apart from all of that stuff. And at this point right now, people are, are still invested in the U.S. dollar. All kinds of different economies are invested in the U.S. dollar. And what they are doing right now is they're starting to pull out of the U.S. dollar because of what was, you know, many different reasons, but specifically because of this one event that we took the $8 billion that was frozen assets um, and we gave it to another country as if it was ours. Now, when that happened, other countries are like, this is, I don't want our, our money at risk here. So they're, they're, um, they're selling off their, their treasury bonds for the United States, which are IOUs, IOUs to the United States, which means one thing, huge problems for the US dollar. Uh, so what are you holding on to? You know, are you holding the US dollar? Are you holding precious metals? Are you invested in the stock market? If you are, the stock market is U.S. dollars. It is, um, it is assets that uh, I believe is a huge bubble that we'll talk about in a minute. But here's the big problem right now with the U.S. dollar, um, and not just U.S. dollar, but all the, the leading fiat currencies in the world are in the same boat, just different levels, but the exact same thing. It's, it's no different. And that's because currency has one destination, zero eventually, right? Um, inflation is inevitable. The central banks want inflation. They 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 have to have inflation. If they don't keep inflating, um, then they then they're going to go out of business. If we go into a deflationary market, they're bankrupt. They can't do that. They can't they will not allow it to happen. Um, and unfortunately, they have more control you know over that than we do as far as that goes. But we have control over our own economy. I'm talking about our household economy and what we're doing and putting away U.S. dollars. We're putting away real money. That's what we have to ask ourselves, are we doing? Now, here's the debt we're talking about. So um, U.S. debt, you know, we're, we're, you know, pushing around 38 trillion. I think we we're just crossed over the 38 trillion not too long ago. Um, but that's what that's what the news and all this stuff is telling us. 38 trillion, which is sickening, right? We don't the, the, the word trillion is thrown around. We don't even know what that means. What is a trillion even anyway, right? Um, and that's that's what we kind of have to like, you know, think about when we're doing it. But the real problem is that 38 trillion isn't even the real number. So here's the other problem. We actually owe 252 trillion, but that's included unfi unfunded liabilities. So unfunded liabilities would be like, um, for example, 
um, Social Security, Medicare, um, uh, the, the bonds we were just talking about, anything that is going to, a payment is going to have to come due. Now, would you not count that in, in your own, put your own, yourself in your own situation? Okay, so you owe on a credit card or you owe somebody money and you know that you have no choice, you have to pay it back, right? Student debt, whatever. You know you have to pay it back. That, to me, is still considered debt. I don't know why it's not included initially anyway in the in our in our debt numbers. But you can go, and, you don't have to take my word for it, you can go to usdebtclock.org. It's, it's, it's crazy. The numbers are going really fast um, and it's not going in the favorable direction. But, uh, but anyway, so in reality, the 38 trillion is a joke. We actually owe um, 252 trillion because of what we actually owe. And, you know, the baby boomers are in the you know midst of retiring. I still think there's many more that haven't retired yet. And when that happens, you know, this unfunded liabilities is going to be, is going to be have to become funded liabilities somehow. Um, and we're in deep, deep doo doo. <laughs> and this is increasing, this debt's increasing by over 1.5 million per minute. So just by the time we finish this webinar, um, today, we're going to already be like another $80 million in debt. So um, uh, I see Lita says, who are they buying gold from? A lot of times they're buying from mines or they're buying, um, f um, they're not buying from usually from independent companies. It's, it's, they don't, they're not operating like that just because they're buying such large quantities. You know, they're, they're buying, you know, direct from the mining company and having them, they're having them minted themselves or they're buying from, you know, you know mint, mint direct or having them, you know, facilitate the whole process. So, you know, obviously when you're spending billions and billions of dollars, you, you can kind of like skip through that process um, a little bit, which is what Mint Builder is here to do anyway. You know, we kind of eliminate a couple of the middlemen, you know, for our members. That's what makes it a little cool. We'll talk about that a little bit. So, you know, interest, just the interest on the debt alone that we owe is $1 billion, a billion dollars just in interest. Okay. That's, it's insane. It's an insane amount. Um, it, it, if this was us in our personal lives, we would declare bankruptcy. There's no fixing. There's no fixing the situation. It's irreversible. You can literally tax everybody 100% of what they make uh, and stop spending, which is impossible. I mean, you got to have the military. You got to like fix roads. You got to school. I mean, the fire department, police, you got all this stuff, right? And you can't stop spending. But even if we stop spending and tax everybody 100%, which, you know, nobody can live, we still can't dig our way out. So that's why our currency has to change. The last time we had a major, major change was 1933 when the currency changed. And this is what happened to all of us average Joes out here. The, just the, you know, just the normal working people out here, even some investors on the upper scale, but not the upper, upper scale, but, um, you know, somewhere on the lower upper scale, all the way down to the, the you know, to the upper lower scale, somewhere all that in between, which is the majority of people, um, this is what happened. So Roosevelt said, okay, we're going to, you have to turn your gold in, but don't worry. We're going to pay you fair value for it. We're going to pay $20 per ounce of gold, which was fine back then. That's what it was going for. Like $20 and 67 cents. It pretty much stayed steady all the time. So that's what he said. And everybody turned in their gold. And then basically overnight, he raised the value of gold to $35 an ounce. So just wrap your brain around that. What does that mean? Does that mean that you know, woo, gold went up thirty, went up fifteen dollars? No, it doesn't. Gold didn't go anywhere. What that means is, is that your twenty dollar bill is worth twelve dollars now. That's what happened. That's sickening. Look, just think for one second what happened. You, you, back in that era, everybody counted on the savings. That's what you did. You didn't, you know, it was just that was what you. Everybody had. Everything they needed was saved. You know, you pay for a house or at least most of it. You you know, you try to pay for your your vehicle, and everything was based on savings. Your entire livelihood was was based on your savings. Um, so what happened was is that the average American and it, it trickled out. Of, you know, not just in the United States, but it trickled out other places too. But here, the average American lost forty percent of their wealth just like that. Forty percent. Imagine if someone, if you've been saving and you're almost retired, um, this actually happened to my grandpa, saving, you're saving your entire life. You know, you're, you're, you're like making it through life. You're not, you're not getting anything special. You're just, you're just, you know, you're able to pay your bills and just put that small amount of wage, you know, each, each week on a paycheck is a little bit, a little bit. And then after like 50 years of working in a factory, all of a sudden 
40% of your wealth, you're just just getting into retirement and all of a sudden 40% of it is just stole from you, just taken away. And there's nothing you can do about it. It wasn't like someone robbed the bank. It wasn't like someone broke into your house and took your money at gunpoint. It was just a silent thief. This came in and just took it away. But this was planned. That's the worst part about it. This was planned. Um, and that's what is probably going to have to happen again. How else are they going to get out of this debt? How else are they going to get out of this debt? They can't. We're, 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 we're bankrupt. There's no possible way for us to pay off the debt that we have, um, even with, you know, all of we, $28 trillion in GDP. That's, that's, what our, that's what the United States is producing. And so it's $38 trillion in debt, and it's growing by $1 trillion every 100 days. There's no possible way to pay that off. So what they have to do to pay it off, just like they did, you know, 90 years ago, is they're going to have to change the currency. And it's happening. It's already happening right now, right before our eyes. And when they do, you, it's going to be devalued. And those holding their money in currency and fake paper money, like Robert Kiyosaki says, cash is trash, holding it in that or ones and zeros on your car, in your, your bank account, you're going to lose whatever amount they have to devalue it to make it so the debt is washed clean. Is it 40%? Is it 50%? Is it 60%? I don't know what the exact number is going to be, but they have to transition to a different currency to wipe out this debt because there's nothing they can do about it at this point. So I don't want to be the one that's going to lose 40, 50, 60% of my wealth overnight. I don't want to be that. We have to learn from the past. The problem with learning from the past is we forget history. And, you know, we're like, oh, that was stupid if they just would have done this or that. Um, well, we know now what happened. And that wasn't the first time in history that happened in 1933. It's happened before that, too. So what we can do about it right now is that we can start converting our, our, our currency wealth into a savings that's going to protect us. Whether that means some of it in crypto, if you're, if you're uh, on board with that, or whether it's, you know, majority of it with precious metals, which I, I believe personally, that's what I do. This is our only protection be, from what's about, you know, what's kind of happening and what we're transitioning into. That's the only thing that would have saved them. So back in that day when, you know, are they going to do their gold um, confiscation? Most likely not, because um, that won't scratch the surface of, of the debt of, you know, the amount of gold and silver in the world won't scratch the surface. Um, but it, it's a good protector. And obviously it is, because why is the central bank's, why are they owning 25% of all the gold in the world right now? Because they don't want to lose 40% of their wealth. Um, you know, why is the, the, the big banks like Chase and stuff, why are they buying up all the silver? Same thing. Uh, Warren Buffett owns like 160 million ounces of silver. Why? Same thing. Um, they don't want to lose a, a, a huge amount of wealth. They, they're protecting themselves. It's like insurance for your financial well-being. So that's kind of just a very short I mean, I know I, I talked about it for a long time there, but there's a lot more to it. Um, but the bottom line is, what are we going to do about it? Um, are we going to just take the information and be like, yeah, that's, that's true. That's good information. And then never do anything about it. Um, or are we going to act on it and be thankful that one day, whether it's, whether it's at the end of this year or whether it's next year or whether it's five years from now, we're like, oh my gosh, I'm so thankful that I purchased Precious metals, because there's going to come a time where there's going to be people lined up down the road. This has happened in history many, many times. Um, it's happened in my lifetime. I was born in the late 70s, but in the early 80s, some of you have been around that long. You remember the huge run um, that was going on, and you know, with a, with a market of precious metals, and people were literally the news reporters were showing people blocks and blocks and blocks lined up down the road trying to get into these gold and silver stores. But guess what? They ran out. If I mean, you weren't front line, you you lost out. And I think it's going to kind of come to the point. Now, will there be precious metals being traded in the immediate? Yes, of course. But is there going to come a time where it might be um, like a huge delay on precious metals? Yeah, that happened in 2020. Um, you know, we, even all, all of, you know, we're, we, we have some really good vendors that are directly connected with the, with the mints and some of them are the mines. And, you know, they have access to precious metals far beyond um, everybody else. Um, and there was even a point in time where it was slow going, getting some of this precious, precious metal demand. So I'm begging you to get involved before it gets to that point again um, for your own good. It's not going to make it won't make a difference, a huge difference to us. But we're, we're kind of like a uh, two sides of the coin here, Mendler. You know, we're, we're one is education. I believe that if you don't know why you're doing what you're doing, then 
you don't really have a heart behind it. There's not a real reason to do it. Um, and then two is getting yourself positioned with the asset itself. And we actually have an edge of the coin too. And I, I'll talk about that in a little bit. So there's actually three sides here to Midler. So the fair price pendulum is something that I worked really hard on um, over um, about a year's time. And it's just really taking um, in consideration the last 50 years and what is the median uh, wages that people made over the years, uh, what is the median cost of things, you know, assets versus cash, all this kind of stuff. To try to get an idea of is this thing that I want to have or don't want to have, is it overvalued or undervalued? Should I be buying it or should I be selling it? Um, if it's overvalued, I can stand to make a lot of profit on it. If it's undervalued, I have a chance to buy it for pennies on the dollar. Um, Warren Buffett talks about this. He says, you know, that it, it, when it's a herd mentality, right? So you got most everybody on the planet is driven by two emotions, greed and fear. And it doesn't make us bad. Um, it just means that, I mean, it's just in our DNA, you know, maybe it goes back to where we were surviving by hunter and gatherers, you know, I don't know, but it, it's kind of like the whole thing where those are the driving forces. So the herd mentality means that everybody's running to do something. And it drives the price way up and then everybody's getting in now. Um, and then all of a sudden it just drops. So most people lose money. So Warren Buffett says, do the opposite of what everybody else is doing. Whatever the herd's doing, do the opposite. When everybody is like greedy and they're all running to buy something, he's saying, be the opposite, be fearful and sell it. Um, when everybody's like fearful and they're selling the thing, he said, be greedy and buy it. And I mean, it's done him pretty well, I think. So this is uh, something that kind of shows you that the fair price pendulum. So I just want to pick on just one thing. There's so many things you can put in here to compare to you, like S&P 500, the Dow Jones, um, you know, cars, um, you know, just anything you can possibly think of, you can put in here and compare it. So the fair price means that, you know, if it, if it falls right here in the middle, exactly down straight up and down vertical, that means it's the fair price. This is what an item should cost. So uh, a house, for example, when it's based on our income over the last 50 years, it takes 412% of our annual income to buy the median house price, median income, median house price. So that means what? Just a little over four years worth of income to buy a house. That's what it over the last 50 years that it should cost. Currently, based on our income, it takes 575% of our income. That's 40% overvalued. Um, so that's showing the housing's overvalued. But is it really overvalued or is our dollar just that bad? Is our, is our income just that bad? Um, living is definitely, living expenses is definitely harder now than it used to be. Um, but that's, again, it's not because um, of these items being more expensive necessarily. It's about our currency that isn't money anymore. That's why it's not money anymore. So if we compare it to gold, it usually takes about 278 ounces of gold to buy the median priced house over the last 50 years. So it doesn't matter if it was 1970, you know, 1974, or if it's 2024, it should be taking around 278 ounces of gold to buy a house. Well, currently it takes about hundred and actually 189 uh, ounces because gold is on its way up. <clears throat> 189 ounces of gold, we'll just say 190 ounces of gold. That means that according to gold, houses are undervalued right now. Houses are cheap. Um, this means that if you had been saving all your money um, that you would normally save, let's say 10, 15, 20% of your income, um, if you had been saving it in gold to maybe buy a future, you know, future purchase of a house, then you would have gotten a huge bargain when buying your house. Same thing with a car. If you'd have been saving with gold or silver, you would have got a, a huge bargain on buying a new car. But when it comes to our income, this is what I was saying earlier that, you know, we, we're going to start saving when we can make a little bit more money, you know, when things aren't so tight, it's going to get tighter and tighter if we're not saving because we're not actually taking our, our, our wealth out of the currency, which by the way, currency is like, think of the word, um, it comes from a Greek word career. Career is, uh, means current. So think of an electrical current going through your house, right? If you stop the current, which we've mastered it, obviously we got switches, we can turn our lights on and off and we, now we can even just, tell our phones to do it. Um, so you have a current going through your house and you stop the current from flowing. There's no power, right? No power. Same thing with our money and the banks know this, the central banks or the banking system, all the, the whole monetary system knows the ultra wealthy, the top 0.1%, 
even in maybe the top 1%, they know this, they know, they understand this. They were probably taught growing up and they just, it is passed on as common knowledge that our paper currency is not something to hold on to because it's a current that has to be used. If we hold it, we're stopping the current. Now we're losing, losing, losing. So you think of Elon Musk, richest man in the world, right? Okay. So he says he's got over $200 billion, right? Do you think he's got $200 billion in cash? No, he's got $200 billion in assets, owning companies, you know, owning, you know, all these different kinds of asset things he's got, right? Property and, and you know, probably precious metals and so many other things, right? That's, that's, that means he's got his currency working for him. I mean, I call those dollar soldiers. You want, you're like a, you, you're the general of your own army. You send out your dollar soldier, the, the fake money, the currency, you send it out to try to bring back more. If you just keep all of your dollar soldiers to yourself and you hoard them right here, they're just going to die off. They're not going to, they're not going to go anywhere. They're not going to make you anything. You're losing. Okay. So savers of currency are losers. Every time in this scenario for the last 50 years, I'm sorry to say it, but it sounds tough, but it is what it is. And so we have to get out past mentality of saving that fashion. Even if the banks are like so enticing now with their, um, you know, we're, we're at like a couple percent on the savings now instead of 0.1% or something. And so, ooh, you know, that's really gonna protect us from a double digit inflation, which by the way, isn't reported as that, but trust me, it is. We all know we go to the grocery store, you know, we get gas. We know that uh, things aren't going up at like 7%. <laughs> we know that's not true. Uh, so it's kind of like a basket of, of goods. They changed this a little while back so that they can pluck out certain items they compare to prices wise. And they put in different items that maybe aren't, aren't as affected by inflation. So it makes it look like overall inflation isn't as bad as it is. Um, but in reality, I mean, we're not, none of us are dumb. We, we know that we're spending more money on things. You know, we know we can't walk out of our door without spending a hundred bucks, 200 bucks, just as soon as we step outside our door. So inflation is much higher than what, you know, that they're saying. So we can't keep our money in this because it's going to lose 10, 15% constantly by doing this. We have to put it somewhere else. This savings model is going to get you ahead every time. It's a no brainer. It's money that's finite. You know, we can't make it. No one's figured out a way to do it yet. They've been trying for centuries. Um, and so it's something that's going to continue to protect us. Now, I told you about silver and gold. Um, hopefully you, you, you got it. You understand. You believe it. You can do at least enough for you to do your own research. Um, check it out yourself. But now let me tell you about Mint Builders a little bit. You know, here at Mint Builder, we have something called a VIP membership. And a VIP membership is kind of like going to Costco or Sam's. You know, it's a wholesale membership. It gives you, there's a lot of benefits and perks. As long as you're using it, it's worth it times 10, right? Um, you know, I have a Costco membership. Sometimes I don't like going there because it's, everybody's running everybody with cards and stuff. It, it drives me crazy. But, but I do know that when you go there, you're going to get stuff for, you know, some stuff if, if you, you can find, it's like half the price of somewhere else. And so I'm using my membership and I'm making it worth my money. So I'm, I'm getting like probably 10 times my money back every year with what I'm using it for. Well, Mint Builder has kind of a similar thing. Um, it's kind of like that. It has a lot of perks to it. One of the big perks is the savings because um, we did eliminate, we've eliminated some of the middlemen. We're kind of selling to you more direct. Uh, here's some examples of just a few things. Like here's a Silver Eagle. Um, screenshots are a few weeks old, but uh, we know the pre uh, precious metal prices have went up uh, a little bit over the last few weeks. But here we go uh, by a little bit. I mean, a, a lot. They're kind of going up pretty fast. But uh, here's a, a top. This this company, by the way, if they're not the number one retailer in the in the world, they're they're gotta be number two. They do billions and billions of dollars in sales. Um, and I don't put their name on here. You can probably see it microscopically on here. But anyway, um, the, if you're buying Silver Eagles from them, and you're buying like one, one through 19 ounces of these, you're going to pay 34.57. Okay. But if you're going to, um, you know, if people oftentimes will, will say, Hey, you know, you, you guys, you know, th they beat you by a couple cents and they look at say this price right here, it says as low as 32.57. Yeah. But you have to look right on here. Actually what's happening is, is that you have to buy 1500 ounces of American Eagles. That's three monster boxes, which is uh, out of the realm for most people to afford. Um, so that's unrealistic, you know, for most people, if you can afford it, sweet, but also it doesn't matter because we still beat that price too. Um, but, uh, and then, you know, then you have to look over here at the credit card price, you know, and that you have to kind of put all that together. This is their wire price. 
So here we go, Men Builder, uh, with the VIP membership, you're saving about 17% from the number one retailer where most people go and spend their money and they don't care uh, and because they know that their prices are fair. Uh, here at Men Builder, was, uh, at this time I did this, and, you know, you're saving over $6 per ounce. So if you're buying 10 ounces, $60. If you're buying 20 ounces, $120. Um, so it makes the membership definitely worth it. Here's another top retailer. They're probably in the top 10 biggest retailers globally. Um, again, $34.55, you know, you can go down to their best price and they got really fair. Um, at, honestly, they have a fair scale. Um, you only need to get to 20 or more, which is affordable for most people. And it's $34.05. So $34.05 isn't too bad, but we're still beating them um, by 20%. So crazy stuff here, right? Now, what about some gold? 2.5 gram is probably one of our most popular gold bars. Um, we have half gram, one gram, but 2.5 gram is just right at the edge of where, you know, I can get maximized amount of gold for the best price and and uh, it's still affordable. You know, kind of think about it this way, like what, how much is your budget? If you're gonna save 10% of your income and, and you would save it in a savings account, just so you have liquid cash, um, and you want to transition that instead to get precious metals because you can always liquidate it, you know, pretty readily. Um, you know, what is your savings budget? So if you're saving, say, 10 percent, you know, the average person, let's say, is making thirty five hundred to four thousand a month. So that's three hundred fifty to four hundred dollars a month in savings. Um, you could easily afford a two point five gram gold. Now, again, this is that number one or number two retailer. Um, they're selling this for two oh seven if you buy one through twenty four of them. Um, 205 if you buy over 100. Um, and here at Men Builder, it's 195 dollars when you, when compared to this, just for buying one, or you can buy as many as you want. Um, so that's a good savings. Now here's another top retailer, um, 222 dollars, 27 dollars savings. So bullion is really tough. It's a tight margin. You know, most companies are you know nickel and diming. They're not making a lot of money on it, um, especially here in the United States. You know, I did find over in the UK that it's not quite as competitive as getting there. Um, but in the United States, probably one of the tightest, you know, for margins anywhere in the world. And um, probably similar in Canada as well. Um, but in Europe, it's a little bit looser still, but it's it's getting it's getting tighter. So what that means is, is there's not a lot of profits in bullion. You know, you're like, okay, well, I spent $200. Well, that company probably made like three. <laughs> they made like $3 in, or, in risking you know, that kind of uh, leverage. So bullying is kind of a, it's kind of a thing where, you, you know, you're doing millions of dollars in sales and Midler is kind of even cutting that out because we're doing that, the level of wholesale, um, kind of like buying direct to the mint almost. So another thing for those of you that like to have what's called the wearable wealth, this is something you can travel with. So maybe, you know, you can only travel with less than $10,000 to most countries um, and, you know, but you can take your bracelets with you and your necklaces with you. And these are pure 24 karat golds. So that means they're four, four uh, times nine. That means 0. 0.9999 pure gold. And uh, so it's soft. So it's one size fits all. You just slip it on. And you, now you're wearing around with you like $2,500. And, you know, you can get in trouble somewhere no matter what country you're in. They're going to, that's an ounce of gold. They want it. Um, so they're going to give you at least, you know, close to the ounce of gold price for it. So um, wearable wealth is super popular. You know, a lot of people also are thinking of the 1933 when gold was confiscated. You know, they didn't take jewelry. You know, does that mean that they never will? Doesn't necessarily mean that, but it does make it a little bit more popular option, especially when you get it from Mint Builder, where it's almost the price of buying a one ounce gold bar. It's almost the same price as a one ounce gold bar, but it's formed into a nice bracelet. And you can get it so it's smooth or you can get it hammered looking. Um, so it looks kind of like more chiselly looking. So it's, you got two options of it. And here it's $300 savings. You know, that that pays for an entire annual membership here at Minute Builder just from one item that you might want to save with. So that's pretty cool. So here's the VIP membership. So if you want to, uh, I'm going to go through all the perks and benefits of it. Um, basically, it's like this. So it's $79 a month. It's $59 a month billed annually, which is $708 right? Um, $79 a month, but there's something cool about it. I'm going to talk about a promotion we're running in a minute. So 50% um, off asset premiums. What does that mean? So assets are your automatic savings. We have this cool tool. You can set it up and you can choose every month. You can change it if you want to keep it the same. Uh, kind of a set it and forget it because I know, you know, if, if it's left to our own minds to remember to save, 
you know, I don't remember stuff. I have to set things automatic. I love automatic stuff. That way I don't have to think about, I only have so many um, thoughts that I can um, focus on in a day. Um, and, and if I have to focus on too many things, I, I don't get as much accomplished. So I like to make things automatic. So my savings is one of them. So what does this mean with our asset premiums? Assets are the saving tools we have. 50% off premiums mean it's half off of what our cost is and what the retail cost is. You're saving half. Um, and then the same thing with the shop. Whatever our cost is and retail cost, you're saving half on that too. You get free metal storage. We're going through a company called IDS of Delaware. This is one of the best um, vaults in the entire country, if not in the world. It's definitely in the top 10 in the world. They are, um, and of course, in Delaware, they have another facility in Texas, and they have one in Canada as well. And um, International Depository Services, they are insured by Lloyds of London, which is really tough to do. Um, you have to be third-party audited, which they are. That means they have people that um, you know are coming in that has nothing to do with their company, and they're, they scrutinize over everything in the security levels um, for Knox. So we do storage through them. Um, and not only is it storage, but it's special storage. I'm not sure if you're familiar, there's three kinds of storage, right? Um, there's this storage where you just put your metals in and when you take it back out, you just get that weight of metals back to you. Uh, it's not guaranteed that you're gonna get the same product back, right? So everything's just stored all together in one big vault. And then there's allocated storage, right? So that's where you know you're you're getting your exact amounts of everything perfectly into your boxes, and then they're segregated, allocated, which means that you have your own box in that vault, and nothing, nobody else's stuff is in that box, and your stuff is only in that box, uh, which means that whatever you send in, you get that all back um, coming back to you. Um, so this is really cool um, having this, and so we have some members that are probably would spend over a hundred dollars a month just in the storage costs with the amount of, you know, stuff they're shipping and it's free. We're, it's covered because um, they're a VIP member here. Um, so they don't have to do that. Um, they don't have to worry about, you know, paying for it. It's all part of the membership here. Um, just looking through some questions in your comments here. Um, $500 insurance. Uh, yeah, Lita, if you can explain that a little bit better, I see you use direct message to me. Um, you can, if you can rephrase that a little bit better, I can, I, I'm happy to answer that for you. So, and I'll keep rolling out here, but, um, Feed Starving Children, this is a great organization. Um, so a 51 c 3 nonprofit, you know, I've been involved with them myself, other ones, and, and I've seen lots of them. And typically the money that's being spent, um, to, you know, for these, for these kind of organizations are usually like 50 to 70% of the funds are going directly to the product. Well, this company is phenomenal. They actually have 91% of all the funds go directly to the food. And I've never seen that large of amount go to them for it. So I'm, I support this company hands down. Um, I've been working with them for 15 years now. I've went and packaged food with them numerous times because they depend on volunteer help. Um, they get into countries it's not even legal to get into. They have ways to smuggle food in. I mean, how sad is that? They have to smuggle food to feed starving kids in their it's their own it's their own children in their country, and they have to smuggle food in because they don't believe in that. Um, and it's not only that, but and it's not just third world countries. It's first world countries. They're here in the United States. You know, they're in the UK and Canada. They're feeding you know children in over a hundred countries. And what's really cool is they also teach them sustainable sustainability. They teach them like how to have some kind of work work skills so that they can actually start working. But you know, you can't have any hope in things of the future if you don't even know where your next meal is coming from. You're starving. You know, that has once you get fed, all of a sudden now you can start thinking ahead in the future of what's going to happen. So anyway, I love this organization. Um, your membership is helping support that every month as well. Um, we have a precious metals knowledge base. It has a lot of FAQs. It has like some schooling to learn a little bit more about precious metals. Um, there's a place that has, um, if you want to do marketing and stuff like that, we have the ability to do that. I'll explain that a little bit. What does that mean? And, um, just everything you need is accessible through this knowledge base. Uh, we have an open vault market seller place. You can sell your precious metals, um, and make it live to the entire base of mint builder, um, customers. So, you know, people are like, what, how do I liquidate? You know, I want to liquidate some metals, you know, first of all, we, you know, we, you can always come to us to buy it back. Um, or you can sell it like on eBay or other places like that. But, you know, you can also offer it here right on the open vault. 
We have the um, access to wholesale access to Mint Wallet. This is digital metals that are physically backed. So I wouldn't do any digital trading anymore. I used to do it with future contracts. And, you know, I found out that, for example, Warren Buffett, he was buying, a, you know, silver contracts, um, ETFs. And he said, you know what, I want to take physical delivery. And they were like, oh my gosh, we don't have, we don't have enough. He bought out the whole ETF and they didn't have enough. So they were scrambling, going to all these different uh, mints, trying to find, you know, silver to, to get him his physical silver. And uh, so that was kind of I already made my suspicions, you know, that I had come to fruition. I'm like, okay, I thought maybe they were doing something because, you know, you're leveraging and all this kind of stuff. There's no way they could possibly have all the metals at play at all times. And they don't. So I like to have, if you're doing digital trading, which is cool because now you can just take your cell phone anywhere you are in the world. Some places don't have access to where they can get, you know, physical metals. Maybe their country doesn't allow it. Um, maybe they don't want to have it shipped to where they're at um, for whatever reason, things like that. You can buy and sell with a push of a button, you know, kind of like a Robinhood app or something. And so you could buy them and sell them. Cool thing is, is every, every ounce that you purchase, gold, you can buy as little as one hundredth of an ounce. Um, all of it is being stored physically in a vault. So it's big bars, like, you know, we're talking like 400 ounce bar of gold. It builds up to that. Um, and you're talking like a, over a thousand ounce bar of silver. This, this is what you're, you're buying. You're, you're owning a piece of that real estate, basically. Um, so all the, the, you know, metal is being backed by it. So it's, it's you know, digital, but it's backed by physical. Um, okay, so the free wealth planning app is Pocket Nest. We partner with Pocket Nest, and it's a good way to get you on track. Uh, you know, what is your goals in life? It kind of like asks you a lot of detailed questions, gets you to a place where you can be like, I want to get out of debt, or I want to save for retirement, or my my kids, I want to send them to university, or whatever it may be. And it helps you plan for all that. It helps you, you know, you know, just get your credit scores up. It helps all those things. Um, this is part of the membership as well. Discounts on travel and attractions. I love this company. Um, it works. It's cheaper than Expedia or anywhere else I've ever found. And I use it as well. You know, I mean, if I'm going to travel and I like to travel, then I want to save a little bit on it. Why pay more than you need to, right? So here's the cool thing about the VIP membership. And this is something that we want to try to make permanent. We're running a promotion right now. So right now, it's instead of $79 a month, it's $40 off per month, every single month only 39 a month. And if you do annual, it's actually under 25. It's $299 a year. So it goes from $708 a year to $299 a year. So that's a $409, $409 you're saving a year. So this is huge. This is huge because this is going to allow you to save more precious metals with this kind of savings on the membership. It's something we've never really offered before. And we've been running this promotion for a little bit. And we want to make this promotion permanent. But the only way we can do it, because we have overhead here at MidBuilder, you know, we're, we have packaging department, we got administrative department, we got IT department. You know, we, we run things very streamlined here. You know, we, we don't waste money. We're very, very efficient with how we run. You have to be in the precious metals industry. Um, but we still have a, a, per, a certain fixed amount of overhead that we have to cover. So for us to keep this promotion going and make it a permanent price, we have to have a certain number of memberships to cover the overhead expense of the company. Um, so what we've done is we've created a goal. So our goal was by the end of this month, April, which is only one, one week left already, it's crazy how fast it's gone by, we wanna have 500 new VIP members in order to keep this price permanent. Um, so this is uh, this is an action that's gonna take everybody's help. So if you're not part of MidBuilder and you're watching this right now, uh, whether live or recorded, if you're watching this right now, um, then this means that you can be a part of this. You can be a part of a history of making the price permanent. Um, and right now we're running at just about 80% of the way there. So it's close. It's going to be a tight one. We got to get to the about another 100 members um, in the next, you know, what is it, by next, before next Wednesday, a week from tomorrow. So that's where we're at. It's gonna, and I think we can do it, guys. I think we can do it. Um, we've been running hard. And, you know, again, just get the word out. You can let people know to watch this. You know, we're, we're, we're gonna have this recorded. We'll have it sent out, you know, have this sent over to people. And, and, you know, here's the cool part about it. It's not just about lowering a membership for you or for the other people or helping the company. It's not even, it's not all about that. What it, you know, MidBuilder is here for is to help people save. 
And if we can lower the price and keep it lower, it's not like, okay, think of Netflix, for example. Do you remember when Netflix was like $7.99 a month or something like that? And then it went to like 10 and then like 13, 15. Now it's like 23 or four. You know, they have Netflix has more than doubled their amount of memberships in just the last uh, four years since COVID, right? Since that whole shutdown and everybody's like, okay, well, I have nothing else to do but watch TV. So they've more than doubled their membership base but yet they've more than doubled their price so we want to do the opposite we want to double our membership base and then we want to justify by that by lowering the price because we're not in here trying to just like uh, make the company this like ridiculously um you know overgrossing you know overreaching company we want to make it so that people can save money that's what we're here for so by referring other people to here or getting started here you're helping people you're helping yourself um, and that's, that's what it's all about. That's what Midler is really here for. You know, I seen a problem a long time ago with my own self and that was not saving, not putting myself in a position to actually save. I loved investing. I, I messed with investing a lot, but I never actually saved. And, you know, you get into a few little, like, you know, trouble spots and you need, you need some savings right away. It's kind of hard to, you know, get rid of, if you own housing, you know, I got into rentals and it's really hard to liquidate a rental property if you need cash pretty fast, right? But with precious metals, it's fast and easy. So this is something that I knew that we needed. We're not a saving generation anymore. Um, so what am I? I'm a, um, um, what is it? Um, 70s. Well, that, that generation, we, we even at that point, we weren't saving. My parents weren't even savers. You know, the, the baby boomers, that was kind of like the teetering point of where people kind of stop savings. And why do you think that is? It's because that was when money became that money. So again, back to the, what we were talking about at the beginning, we have to start becoming savers. So I said, okay, 2007, I'm like, I'm going to make it so we can create an automatic savings, but with something good with precious metals. And that's when we went into this industry, um, you know, head on like a bull came straight into the industry and said, we're going to help people save. And we've been doing it ever since. So we're going on almost 17 years of helping people save real money, true money. Um, and that's what we're, that's what we're still doing today. So here's what it looks like an auto asset savings. This is like an auto meaning that you're just going to continue to get it, but you can change it or pause it or cancel it anytime you want to. Um, and you can set it how you want. you like, I want a half a gram of gold. Uh, maybe this next month I can get 2.5 grams. Maybe next month I want to get some silver, but what, or you can just leave it in the next month. So you got 2.5 grams. It'll, you'll get it this month, next month, the next month, right on schedule every month. Um, but you can always, before your next month goes out, you can always change it to maybe I want a 10 ounce silver bar. Um, you know, you can do that. Some people um, will, will pause their auto asset and not have one. And they'll just go in the shop because they're really good at remembering to do that. Uh, I'm not one of those people, you know, but that is an option. So that's really cool how that works, right? So um, let's see here. Oh, if... Okay, yeah, I'm looking and reading uh, some questions here. Oh, okay, being your own bank. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that in just one second. We're just about ready to get into it. So I talked about the metal storage. Um, we know that's free. The Mint Wallet where you can have digital metals that are physically backed, getting wholesale access to that. And here we go. This is what um, uh, Lita was messaging me directly about. Um, and it's a very good one. This is called infinite banking concept. So it's nothing really new. Uh, it's actually been around for about 140 years now, right? And this infinite bank is um, is basically a way to become your own bank, okay? It's something that, you know, these big gurus of the late 1800s, early 1900s, they were already doing it. Uh, Rockefeller was killing it. Matter of fact, they still use it to this day. Um, even though he's not here for a long time now, his family is still benefiting from this Rockefeller bank. Um, and also, uh, President Biden has, I think, three of these infinite banks. What they are is they're based on whole life insurance policies. And you're basically partnering with this whole life insurance company and you're creating a savings. And you are allowed to do that up to a certain amount because of our tax code. You can do it tax free. So normally to do, I hate to even say, quote unquote, tax free, you, know, you get into like a 401k or something, right? And, you know, Roth IRAs, things like that. You, so you're, you might be deferring tax, but you're still going to pay tax inevitably, right? But the cool part about with this is it's you can save up to a certain amount based on your income. Now, it is a complicated math 
equation on the back end of it, but we've partnered with a company called Unlimit. Um, and Unlimit is awesome. I love I love the team there. Um, I work with Mike. Uh, Mike is one of the owners and co-founders. Um, one of the nicest guys you're ever going to meet. He's just straightforward, honest, and um, it's really good to, you know, finally like, you know, meet with somebody like that in that industry, because I know that industry is kind of can be like sales pitchy and he's not anything like that. He, he'll never, ever, you know, can be pushy about things, but here's the cool thing about it. And if you want to, you know, know it like really in depth about it, uh, we have a recording, a video recording that, um, that will make, make possible if you can, it is already available. You can get with the person who referred you on here. Um, or if you already are a member, you can just email support at and they'll direct it to you. It should be a knowledge base at this point. Um, anyway, so you, you're, you're saving money in there and there's a threshold called the mech. You don't want a mech because that means if you save too much, now you're gonna have to pay taxes on what you save, um, but you can save quite a bit. And basically it's, you're just saving money in there. It's really cool, tax-free. Um, you're earning interest on it. You know, it kind of ends up being about 5%, but it is guaranteed interest. That, that you're going to be guaranteed to earn interest on it. That's the cool part about it. There's only a couple of things in the entire world that's guaranteeing you're going to earn interest. Um, they've been doing that for 140 years and it's, and they've always have been doing it and they always will be doing it. Um, also, at the end of uh, a year, you can start earning dividends because you're basically like partnered with them. Now, here's the really cool part about it. This is what kind of like blows people of mind. They don't understand how it works. Um, and this is how it is. Okay, so let's say that you've built up a savings of like $12,000, okay? And you need to take $10,000 out to buy a used car. Okay, so if you would do that in any other model, whether it be a, um, a savings account, whether it be a 401k um, or anywhere else, when you take that $10,000 out, what does that leave in your account? 2,000, right? So when you are earning interest, how much are you gonna be earning interest on? $2,000. But with this, when you take $10,000 out, guess what? You're still earning 12%, I mean, you're still earning the percent on the $12,000, the full amount doesn't make sense, right? It's arbitrage. You're actually double dipping in a legal way. So a lot of big uh, companies, the top 0.1%, they, they do this, they've been doing it for a long time. Um, this is nothing new. So you're taking the money out. Hopefully you're saving on a lot of interest or you're making interest. You can use it to invest in like real estate um, or you can you know use that for your savings for silver and gold. Um, or you can, you know, make big purchases with it, like you need a new vehicle, or maybe you need to pay off some high interest debt. You can do that, but it's good to save it first and then take it out and pay it off because then now you're still earning that percentage rate on there. Now you're already, you are going to be charged some percent, um, on the money that's out, but you're making more percent back than what you're paying. That's the whole point of it all. So you're, you're still earning on that full amount and you're paying yourself back and that's all going up from there as well. So um, it's a really cool process. It's something that's, you can potentially combine it with something like a trust. Um, and then um, it's pretty much, you know, it's ironclad. It's it's kind of like an untouchable, untaxable kind of situation. And also just a benefit on it, side note, is this life insurance. So if something should happen to you, um, you know, someone else is gonna, you know, still benefit from it. It's not like it just goes away. Um, now, some people have said, okay, well, maybe I'm too old or I have medical things that make it too expensive for me to have insurance, which could be the case, but I would still recommend, you know, having a consultation with Mike and the team at Unlimit, um, you know, going over there and doing that. And then when you do have this conversation with them, what they're probably going to say is, do you have any loved ones? Like, do you have a spouse or do you have any children, um, grandchildren? Do you have any um, key employees? You can insure them. Uh, for example, I was telling you Biden has three policies like this. He has three infinite bank policies. Do you think, I mean, he can't insure himself three times. Uh, you can only insure yourself once. So he's probably not insuring himself at all. He's probably insuring, um, you know, someone else in his family or, you know, any of the key people in his life. You know, there's, there's certain limitations, but there's a lot of people that you can insure. Um, and why would you have more than one policy? Well, if you do max out the policy, like how much you're saving per month in one, you know, where you don't mech and go over and get taxed on it, then you're going to, and you want to save more, well, then you can open up another policy and insure somebody else. So that's really, it's just a really cool uh, whole process with that. And again, when you go to Unlimit, um, you can 
find the, the resource, I think, through, um, through our site, but definitely go to support at mintbuilder.com. We can get you connected. Um, if you happen to, you know, find your way directly to Unlimit, that's fine as well. But make sure if you do, um, you tell them that um, you were sent from Mint Builder because um, this is something absolutely amazing that's never, I've never seen in this industry. Um, they won't charge you anything. So make sure to tell them you're from Mint Builder. Um, you know, a lot of companies that set the policies up for you, um, I know firsthand because we were utilizing one at one time, um, they charge a thousand dollars, 500 to a thousand dollars, right? Just in setup fees, you don't get anything. It's not your savings, that's just setup fees. And I mean, rightfully so, I'm not, I'm not coming against them for doing it because there's a lot of work involved with setting the policy up. Uh, a lot of stuff getting it, get everything measured out right and, you know, doing due diligence and getting you set up with the insurance and all that. Um, but Unlimited will charge you nothing. They won't charge you anything. Uh, so just make sure to tell them that you're referred from Mint Builder and they'll get you hooked up. You know, that's why we partnered with them. You know, I, I met with them and um, we did a lot of um, a lot of talking and um, going back and forth on a lot of things. I asked them a million questions, make sure the due diligence was there. Um, and yeah, they're super nice people. And uh, best I've ever found in the industry anyway. So um, so anyway, I think you'll be doing great there. So that is who we utilize for that purpose. And I think that was what you were kind of asking if I answered your question thoroughly there. All right. So yeah, you were saying if it costs $500 and then $250 a month, how soon after can you take a loan? Yeah. So yeah, you won't charge, it won't charge you anything up front except for the amount of your savings uh, that you're actually putting in savings. And it's going to take a few months to build up. Um, and then you're able to, you'll, you'll be able to take, take money out. It doesn't take a huge, huge amount of time to do that. Um, yeah. You're just, you're going to want to obviously make sure, cause it's like something like they'll let you take out like 75 to 80% or something like that. There's like somewhere between the 70 and 80% mark. Um, you can take out and the rest, you know, they want to make sure that it's protected there. So, all right. So just on the other side, I told you here at Builder, we have two sides of the coin. You know, we got the whole idea of, you know, helping people protect their wealth and, um, and then getting them the best prices, prices on precious metals. Um, and, and then other side of the coin is education, but actually there's, three sides to a coin, right? There's the edge. So there's the, uh, you know, a three dimensional real coin has three sides and the other side of it, that thin little edge around there, that's, that's the side that we're going to talk about just for a really quick minute. Um, and that is the refer and earn program. So I'm not going to go in depth on it. We have an entire, um, uh, video that's recorded that talks about it and we're actually transitioning to make it even better anyway. So, um, but here's the bottom line. You like to save precious metals. You like to save money uh, doing it, but you know, getting it for the best price, stack more, spend less, just like our, our logo says. Um, that's what we're all about. You want to help other people, you know, just help themselves like you're, you're doing as well. Um, it's a no brainer. You refer people to Mint Builder. You don't really have to do anything else. That's it. We'll take care of fulfilling their orders for them. Um, we'll take care of the payment processing. Um, we'll do, you know, answer their questions for them. Um, we're going to help educate them. We're going to do all these things. You just simply refer them. Um, and guess what? You're going to get paid and you're probably going to get paid some residual money. So residual just means recurring, which means that like if they're on a monthly membership, we're going to give you a percentage of that monthly membership every single month, as long as they remain a member. So you refer someone once, you know, most affiliate programs out there, are like, you know, you refer somebody, we'll give you 25 bucks or hundred bucks, or if it's like a big uh, ticket item, it might be a couple hundred bucks. Um, it's not like that here. It's, it's, we're going to continue to give you that. So we, we have, an, I, we have, you know, something we could do like most companies, we could take our marketing budget and we can go to Google ads. We can go to, you know, anywhere on the internet and just start like, you know, trying to get advertising out there. We could be doing, sending out, you know, flyers and digital stuff and, you know, doing all the stuff like spending the money to get marketing, to get more business. That's what, that's what businesses do. They do marketing. They have a marketing budget. Well, we've taken our marketing budget and we said, Hey, we're helping people to save. We're helping to educate people. Why not also give them an ability to have another stream of income? So we basically almost solely, almost completely 100%. It's really close, like 99% um, depend on referrals. And that's why we put our entire marketing budget into our referral program. And I'm going to tell you, our referral program, bar none, there is in, in this niche of the industry, 
ours is going to pay out more than any other one that you've ever seen based on the dollar amounts um, in the precious metals um, affiliate program. Now you're going to see other ones out there and they're going to do things like binaries, uh, which I despise. I, we, we tinkered with it years ago and it was a, it was a huge mistake. I don't like it because what happens is you have to refer some people. It gets complicated. Just, I, just even thinking of how to explain it right now is if you're not familiar with the industry, it's super complicated. So you have two teams. You got to get so many points and sales on one team and so many points and sales on the other team. And they have to be equal or at least a certain amount so that they balance. And then now you can get paid some commissions, maybe. But you have to make like 500 points on one team and 500 points on the other team. And then you're going to get finally paid a commission of 500 bucks. But what does it actually take to get that? How many sales do you have to actually make to get that? Um, the average person won't ever get that. They won't hit it. Um, and that's the problem. That's a problem. So in our industry, you know, we're, I don't really even put ourselves in that kind of uh, niche of the industry because we're basically just a precious metals company. Um, th that's like a, a wholesaler of precious metals. Uh, but because we have this refer program, a lot of the other companies, they do that because in the, you know, there's not a lot of profits in bullion. So they're trying to like make it look bigger. The numbers look bigger. So that way, you know, it, it seems more attractive, but I've been running, the numbers on the back end, because I love numbers um, for precious metals companies, affiliate programs. And I can tell you that those numbers, the average person is not going to hit those numbers. And so uh, maybe the top three to 5% are going to make some money and 90 some percent are not. Um, anyway, it's, uh, yeah, okay, guys, and I know it's, 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 you know, like I said, we, we tinker with it. And I'm like, okay, I finally said, this is not right. We want you to get paid. You make one referral, just one. And you're going to pay. And it's probably going to be residual. It's either going to be, you're going to get paid every month for it or every annual renewal for it. Um, and then if they're buying other products from the shop, you're going to get paid a little bit for those. You know, obviously, bullion, there's not much margin in it, but a little bit. Um, just for referring over people to us. And we appreciate you for doing that. Because, again, that's our entire marketing budget is wrapped up in that. Um, so when it all comes down to it, um, Midler's got the highest payout in the industry. Um, and also we're helping people save more precious metals. So, uh, that was a little bit more long winded. I want to go into it, but that's all we have on here tonight. Um, went a little bit long here tonight, but I just want to let you know this promotion. Let's not forget. We have only seven days left and we're looking at locking in a hundred more memberships. It should be easy. Um, with everybody we have it should be easy. Um, that's like, if you just refer one person, we're going to blow this away. Um, and then, you know what? And I'm not afraid to say this, but if we, can get even past that. We, uh, you know, once we get past the 500 mark of new, new 500 new memberships coming in, um, then we, we're, I'll probably set another bar and then we'll be able to say, Hey, if we hit this bar, we can put the memberships to, a, to an even lower level. I'll be happy to do that. Um, just to get people saving more precious metals and spending less on the membership, but numbers have to obviously make sense. So that's it. It's kind of up to, um, all of us now just to kind of do the part and, we're ready to rock and roll. And hopefully you guys understand a little bit more about what's happening with our uh, current economy. It's, it's, it's looking a little bit, uh, a little bit bleak, but that doesn't have to be for us. We could be a part of that, like 1% that said, you know what, you know, we know how to take care of ourselves financially. Um, and we're going to, we're going to actually capitalize and not be victims um, during this kind of changeover, if you will, over the next year, a couple of years. So let's do this, guys. Let's do this. All right. I appreciate you guys so much. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'll stick around and answer them. You can unmute your mic or you can um, or you can type in chat. Um, but I do. Hey, I do really thank you guys for being out here. Good questions lead on that. I appreciate you. Um, and the good comments there, Linda and, and Kaius, I appreciate you guys as well. All right. I don't see any questions popping up, so I will go ahead and end it. I know I was kind of long, kind of long tonight, so.